Yes. Like, are these like dog experiments? <laughs> um, oh. Dogs that helped in science. I, I didn't pick any sad ones. Oh, I, damn it. I put two Ps for super. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Carly here, and I have some red wine tonight. Kelsey, what do you have tonight? Water. That sucks. Yeah. Alex, what do you have? I have, um, I'm finishing up my Moscato and then I'm going to open a hard lemonade. Very nice. Very nice. What do you have for us tonight? I believe you are presenting. Science dogs. I really like dogs. And then I found science stuff related for a last minute presentation. That is the entire premise of this. <laughs> Just, I like dogs and science. Pavlov's dogs. I don't, there's not, wasn't a picture of his dogs. Cause I tried to put all the other ones have pictures of actual dogs. This was a, a 1890s Russian um, physiologist, Ivan Pavlov. He researched um, salivation in dogs in response to being fed, which ended up being like a big kind of like psychology experiment because he put a he put a test tube in each of the dog's cheeks to measure saliva when they were fed. And you know he expected they were going to respond to food, but they also started responding to his assistant bringing them food when they whenever they heard the footsteps, they knew that meant they were going to get food. And then so then he started training them to associate other things with food to trigger their response. Like he would you know, like he said the sound of a metro- metronome or like ringing a bell is like the common one you hear so even when you say like oh do you want a treat or something that automatically picks up the dog's ear you know they automatically have a response to it that could easily indicate to them that means food so they would start salivating from that they could yeah Yeah. if that's something you if that's something you say every time and then you give them a treat yes it probably could so like they trained he trained the dogs to salivate to like a bell another noise because he would ring a bell and then give them food and um, i think this has been seen in other things too with like i think with humans and stuff that you can um like just like training your like response to things like you see a picture of food and you might salivate or like when they made that little kid terrified of I forget that I I feel like that sounds familiar but I forget that one but yeah it's things like that you can train a response by like I'm guessing they gave him a rabbit and then did something that scared him yeah like they did they did something like scary to him every time or like um this is why like sometimes if you grow up like you can't eat that food for a while like you'll sometimes you'll get nauseous just thinking about like the last food you ate when you yeah up. like when you first drink like a certain type of alcohol like just say like tequila or my experience was vodka that one night i had really bad and i mean i was throwing up for two hours or something like that i didn't drink yeah. vodka for a good few months after that yeah, yeah even that even energy. just like a like one time if it's like strong enough to form an association yeah but even like my dog, um, Woody, we don't know how he does it, but he knows the sound of you taking the container of ice cream out of the freezer. Like he doesn't come sprinting across the house for like when you, I mean, yeah, he'll come in the kitchen when you have food, but he doesn't come sprinting across the house when you just take anything out of the freezer. He knows when you take the ice cream out. And then when you take it out and start putting, by the time you're putting it on the counter, he's running into the kitchen. Like, how do you know? But like I said, dogs have better hearing. So I'm assuming he's hearing something and he's like, ice cream. So then this is robot. Um, This is an archaeological discovery, Carly. Oh, cool. Oh, I know this. The caves. Yeah. A dog found it. I didn't know that. Yeah, um, initially, um, so the caves in, I'm not, I don't know French. So in this place in France. I think it's Lascaux. Lascaux? Yeah, Lascaux. Yeah. Lascaux. Lascaux. Whatever that is. Um, it's famous for um, having very detailed and like well-preserved art. There's like more than 600 paintings by early humans there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's so, like the first thing you learn in archaeology <laughs> and also yeah, like, for history too. Yeah, it's like a very famous area. But this an 18-year-old mechanic, um, Marcel Rad- Ravidat, um, was walking uh, with uh, his dog Robot. Robot slipped and fell down a foxhole. And when Marcel went to get him, he found this. So the dog wow. like fell into there. Okay. And the dog kind of found it first. And then he found all of that um, because his dog went down there. I'm happy he named his dog Robot. Well, yeah, technically, um, one of the biggest archaeological discoveries um, was from a dog. 
I'm just happy the amount of dogs that are involved. Yeah, no, this in, that's this, this entire presentation. It's all dogs. Yes, dogs. So this is this is the only one that has a sad one in it. Uh, Strelka and Belka. Um, they're, they're the happy one. They're they're the happy ones. But um, so they were um in the 1960s, the Soviet Union lost um, launched Sputnik with several animals in it, which not not the best idea. But um, they were all, they were all fine. The two of the animals were two dogs named Strelka and Belka, which I also liked that. According to the Wikipedia page, it said Strelka means squirrel or whitey, and Belka means little arrow. Which that's Strelka and Belka down here. I love that they're named Lime. So they were the um, part of the first living creatures to orbit and return safely to Earth. Both dogs then went and like lived full lives after the trip. Unfortunately, the reason that I said the first living is Leka, <laughs> the one over here was the first dog in space but unfortunately she did not make it back oh that's so sad that's this is the only sad one i put in i felt like i had to mention her if i'm mentioning stalka and belka yeah but, um but yeah it got too hot in the capsule and she didn't make it back damn alex you really know how to depress us don't you this is the only sad one in there yeah they i remember i heard they did like other things to the things they did to prep Lega for space i remember she i think she was literally a stray that they caught or something like that yeah Stralka and belka were slate were definitely um strays and then Lega, i'm not 100 percent sure off the top of my head i know Stralka and belka were i feel like that makes it even more fucked up hey dog want to come with us and die in space they honestly didn't have the technology to safely bring back animals yet. So I hate to admit it, but they probably knew she wasn't going to make it in space. I don't think they had. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, they did, they did even say uh-huh. in the article, even if it didn't, she probably wouldn't have made it um, coming back into, into Earth. Popper, I remember also hearing that to get her prepped for like space flight, they threw her in like centrifuges to get her used to G-force. I think they put her in like progressively smaller cages to get used to being cramped. So go on Balto. Ah! Oh, cute, cute Balto. Okay, this is supposed to be, there's a typo here. That's supposed to be 1925. So in 1925, um, dipth- diphtheria, it's an airborne disease. Um, children are especially vulnerable. That was spreading through a town in Alaska. There was no vaccine available, available at the time, and they were only using like an antitoxin to treat it. But there... The antitoxin was um, like 700 miles away. So they had more than uh, 100 Siberian sled dogs recruited to help. And Togo and Balto are among the more famous ones. This one is Togo and this one's Balto. Togo ran double the distance of any other sled dog in the relay through the most dangerous conditions. And Balto finished the last 55 mile stretch and delivered the serum, the serum to them. Now I want to watch this movie again. I remember watching it. I haven't seen Balto in so long. It's a movie? Yeah. yeah. yeah there's movies on these dogs. And I think I saw a Togo one come up too. And I know I saw stuff about giving Togo more credit because he like did a lot. Yeah, Balto is the one that the kids movie was about. Yeah, the animated one. You got a movie. That's how you, that's how you know you made it big when you got a movie made about you. <laughs> uh, the lady dog. And... Now remember there being like a bear and the bears. I'm gonna pronounce his name wrong. It's it's that French name. Um, this was Alexander Graham Bell's terrier. We actually helped him in his with his early work. Oh, cool. Prove it. <laughs> Yeah, Trube or something like that. I feel like I'm going to butcher his name. But um, Graham Bell's father worked with the deaf community and they wanted um, to him to create like some kind of speaking machine because you know, he was interested in like inventing stuff. And um, so he looked into this by manipulating his dog's mouth as he barked to make him sound like he was speaking. Because I guess he kind of figured, you know, if he could figure out how to make the dog speak with the mouth moving, he could apply some ideas and teach a deaf person how to speak. He actually trained the dog to growl in a way that sounded like, how are you, grandmama? I really wish there was a way to record that and listen to that. I know. I want to hear a dog say that. It actually, it worked out for Graham Bell because, um, you know, he went on to become an expert in speech and hearing. And as most you probably know, invent the phone. But his dog was one of the initial ways he learned about speech stuff. 
So the dog helped invent the phone. That's so wholesome. I had no idea Alexander Graham Bell worked with deaf people. Well, his dad did. And his dad wanted him to invent something. So I think he was involved. So I don't know how to pronounce his name. Nike. Nikhil, maybe Nick, Nick, it's something like that. Nikhil. There is a, there is a brief video I have for this, so they do say his name. I'm not gonna play the whole thing. This is this one. This one is a happy ending, but he was abandoned and lost his paws in the Nebraska winter as a pu- as a puppy. But he was found and taken to a rescue center where a veterinary assistant, uh, Christy Pace, um, that should say gave. For the record, I made this like an hour. hour. In my defense, this one I did make like two hours before the call. Are you drinking while you're making these? I was (laughs) not. He was the first dog to be fitted with four prosthetic limbs and was dubbed the bionic dog. Terminator dog. Pretty much. He's not like a super like he didn't do a ton specifically, but he was the first dog to have the like four um, prosthetic limbs. And they did make more advancements in like veterinary medicine with prosthetics and everything. But, you know, his limbs you know, are mimicking the muscles of his original limbs. And, uh, you know, he can still play fetch and everything. And I do have a little video of him that I can share. I have two videos. This one I'm probably not going to play the whole one. Why does this not have more views? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Nikio teaches others who have a disability to just keep going in life. I didn't even know at the time that he was the first dog in the world to have four prosthetic legs, which was pretty awesome that you know he could pave the way for other animals. He's been through so much, but he's got such a wonderful spirit and a wonderful heart that he's so it cute. kind of trumps everything. I love him. When Nikhil was a puppy, him and his littermates were left in a foreclosed home in Nebraska. And it was during the winter, and Nikhil was the only one that was found frozen. Ah, oh my and God. Now he suffered severe frostbite, and he lost all of his paws on all four. I mean, the obvious. Um, he was very fun-loving. He was excited to be out and about. So we were really working on a solution that, what? through prosthetics, could restore him back to these uh, desires that he has they, as a she fun-loving wouldn't actually puppy. Made a you know, I didn't know too? at the time he was going to need four uh, prosthetic uh, legs. I thought uh, that left hind I thought this was, was so cute. My first children's book Stubby called and Stubby magic and boots. His Magic Boots. Cute. Children about compassion and unconditional love and just to accept everybody for who they are, disabled or not. The beauty of Nikio is that he shows us this thrive for life, uh, this desire to just get out and play and not perceive the limitations that exist. Nikio has taught me to live life to the fullest and that, you know, even if you're disabled, I I thought I would just show a bit of that one. I thought the book she made was so cute, though. Is he still alive? um that was five years ago yeah I, i'm not a hundred percent sure should i are you still looking for it carly or no, no you can just go okay. i'll tell you um milka is our next one yes um, i know this one <laughs> um this was um in 1941 a switch engineer and inventor joy george de mesfra um took his dog milka she's an irish pointer um for a walk and milka returned with a bunch of those like prickly burrs um from a burdock plant like they were all stuck in her fur and demestral began to like started to like look at these and was curious about them and studied them under a microscope and he saw that they had a bunch of like tiny hooks and that was how it stuck to her fur and this inspired him to create velcro Um, It gave him the idea for the material after seeing how the plant stuck to his dog. Biomimicry. Oh my god. I know what happens in the Kio. What? It's even worse than I could have imagined. Oh, are you seeing the gunshot thing? Because I don't think that was the same dog. No. This is real. Like, this is his actual Instagram page. So he died. No. In 18. But the mother, the person, apparently... I, um, she said, um, I know it's been very long time, but I had a hard time posting on a different social media pages. So if you follow Nakia's Facebook, then you already know. But if not, the day after Easter on 4 one 
my heart shattered into a million pieces while my husband and I were taking our kids to school in the morning. There was an electrical fire in our home. And not only did we lose our home and possessions, which are all replaceable, I lost my heart. All of my fur babies passed away with smoke inhalation, including Nakio. That's. Oh my God. I did all the sad dogs. Alex, why did you do this to us? I was, worried, happy I was worried you're gonna say he got hit by a car or shot or something like that when you said That's it was even worse. worse. That what is so fire much worse. worse. Maybe I'm we sorry. just should look up what happened to the animals and just listen to the happy stories. <laughs> yeah. I hope Milka didn't like get have anything. All right, I'm not gonna look up any more. <laughs> hey, let's not look these up. Also, also, can we point out that her owner's got a banging, awesome-looking hat? That's a stylish hat. Smokey. <gasps> is um, this so, what I think it is? Smokey's a Yorkshire Terrier, um, and is officially recognized as the world's first therapy dog. <laughs> was um, he the dog from The Wizard of Oz? Oh, wait, no, no, that wasn't a Yorkshire Terrier. That was a different type of Terrier. No, and it's a she. Uh, her owner um, was a Corporal William... Win Wayne Win was um admitted to the hospital with um dang 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 I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. fever which is a virus spread through the bite of an infected mosquito but the nurses saw how much Smokey was helping him as well as other shoulders so um the commanding officer um Dr Charles Mayo allowed Smokey to stay in the hospital where she was a therapy dog for twelve years I'm sorry but what the fuck kind of name is Dr Charles Mayo <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I noticed that too. I'm like, that's an interesting name. Was this like World, War World, War World War II? Oh, I sure Could you imagine years. you're just in like World War II and you're asking for the lead physician and they say it's Dr. Charles Mayo or just Dr. Mayo will be right with you. I'll be like, excuse me, who? You mean like a bag of mayonnaise or something? You know what? Bunch of mayonnaise on a sandwich helps me feel better. Why not in the hospital? <laughs> um, the dog was food. alive from um, 1943 to 1957 okay so probably world war ii well that's like late world war ii to after so it might have been other wars after as well maybe the korean war no maybe korean i was trying to think of what war would have been right after well korean war wasn't that like early 60s i thought well, it was early 50s well yeah. war, it's, it's end of world war ii oh, no, 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 and no, then you're right because both of my grandfather served in the korean war yeah. and they're both around the same age yeah, it would definitely be end of World War II, I think, but I don't know, like I said, if it went into another war, which may, may be Korean. But yeah, so the 40s was the start of therapy dogs because of Smokey. That was also when they were first uh, recognizing PTSD, wasn't it? Or was that after World War One? They don't know that for sure, but it would um, also it make sense. It might have been World War One. Well, right. they, they called it shell shock at that time. So Chaser? Is one of I think I think Chaser is the last one on here. This is another more recent one, but um, uh, Chaser is a border collie that um helps people learn about um language acquisition, long term memory, and cognitive ability of animals. Cool. Um, in her fifteen year um lifetime, it was only like a couple years. Um, she's um yeah, this was she was like fairly recently. That's um, pretty. I mean, that's pretty long for any yeah, but I'm saying medium size. Like, I think it, like, no, she was, like, early 2000s to, like, I think, like, 2019-ish, 2004 to 2019, like, like she was, like, fairly recent dog, but um, Chaser learned to identify um, 1,022 proper nouns, which is the largest tested memory of any non-human, and I have a video of her doing this. Ecology professor John Pilly was interested in finding out how many words a dog could learn. You did good. Everybody can still hear, right? Yeah. Okay, I was just making sure. But. And seven years ago, he found the perfect student, Chaser. Using crate loads of toys, John and his colleagues devised a groundbreaking study of canine intelligence. The toys all have names that Chaser has learned throughout her life, and John picks eight at random. Chase, let's play some. Chase. Find punt. Go get punt. Rain pop pop punt. Do it, girl. Do it. Yeah. Into. Yeah, good girl. Chase. Find roach. Find roach. 
Fine roach. I want roach. Good girl. John never Good looks girl. at the toys on Fine. the mat. Wow. So to pick the right object, Chaser has to actually wow. understand what he's saying. Yeah, there's wow. Hint up, hint up. <laughs> In three years of intensive training, Chaser has learned an astounding 1,022 words. That's 116 balls, 26 frisbees, and over 800 cloth animals. But how does she do it? On the mat are five items Chaser knows, and one new one she's never seen, a cat that John calls Meow. Chase, find Meow, find Meow, find Meow. Do it, girl, do it, do it, do it, girl. Bring it to Papa. This Bring task out. involves Bring Bring highly Papa. complex logic. The new word isn't in Chaser's vocabulary, so she has to understand that it might refer to an unfamiliar object. Do it, girl, do it. You can tell like Chase, she knows, but out. she's like I'm not sure. Out. Do it, girl, do it. She went right. straight for it too, and she's like, no, Wait. she like knows, but she's like. The way to Excuse solve me? the puzzle is by a process of elimination. Yeah. Good Get girl. Do it, do it. There's Meow. Come here, come here. After like, only like, one so trial, the new Good toy girl. and the Good sound girl. Meow are Good lodged in her meow. brain. Watch Meow. Catch Meow. Good girl. And it just goes to show that you can <laughs> teach an old dog new tricks. She's got so many toys. I, think I just want to... I just want to say though, this kind of exercise is mentally exhausting for them, so I can understand why she's like panting the way she is. I thought it was so yeah. cute though that she like went to that cat, and then you could tell she was like unsure. And I think she she was sort of like walking away a bit, like she was like shy and unsure. And then he was like, "No, you're right, like good girl." Like and then she starts running back, like she was second guessing herself. But yeah, this was my last one. Um, this was a shorter one i thought this was a cute one to do <laughs> it had dogs i'm happy thank you for tuning in kelsey um do you have a creative threat for either me brandon or even alex there <laughs> i don't know if i want to make a dog related threat that sounds sad oh what about um i will uh, like expose you to hypothermia and then you'll Cut off your toes. That, and it just made me sad thinking about the dog. <laughs> well, well, I was gonna say, um, I'd send, I'll send you to space as as the test subject. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> oh, you're so fake. You're such a poser. <laughs>